Hi, everybody. I am Megan Sipple. I'm the Academic Success Coordinator for the Wausau UW Stevens Point campus. And today we're going to be talking about studying. So I have a lot of material to cover. I have uh, just so much to talk about. So I'll just jump right in. Um, there might be activities and things for you to consider throughout. So I would just keep your um, pause button handy so that you can take a moment to reflect on things um, and work on some stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to study most efficiently, which will help you hopefully prepare for an exam. So Bloom's taxonomy. Um, some important things to consider before we jump into exactly what Bloom's taxonomy is. Um, consider to yourself, what's the difference between studying and learning? So sometimes students will say studying is um, a way to make a grade, right? Get an A on something. Um, and then maybe learning is more so focusing on how, why, and what ifs um, in order to completely understand and be able to build upon that information. Um, and just think to yourself, okay, so up until this point or in high school, um, how have I been operating? Have I been operating in more study mode or have I been operating more in learning mode? Um, and think to yourself, like, would you study harder to make an A on a test or to teach the material to a class? Um, and then consider, you know, have I been um, in make an A mode or have I been more in teach mode? So, um, a lot of times, like, have you ever experienced um, where you're trying to explain something that you thought you knew really, really well, um, like explain a problem to a friend or a parent, and then through the process of explaining it to them, you understood that you didn't fully understand um, whatever you're trying to explain to them. Um, so this is something that's going to be important in understanding Bloom's taxonomy and how it fits into your your college career. So Bloom's taxonomy is a hierarchical um, order of cognitive processing, meaning that learning at the higher levels is dependent on having a, attained prerequisite knowledge and skills at the lower levels. It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It just means that you need all of them um, in order to get all the way to the top. So it's something that you build upon. So the lower level skills require less cognitive processing, but they serve as an important base for the higher level learning. So um, remembering um, is about memorized like verbatim definitions or formulas that you can't really put into your own words. Understanding you can paraphrase um, the material. Applying would be able, you would be able to um, use the information you've learned to solve problems that you've never seen before. Analyzing is where you can take a concept you've learned and break it down into its component parts. Evaluating is look at, looking at two different processes, maybe proposed by others or an instructor or something like that, and determine which is likelier to be correct, efficient, or desirable. And then finally, creating. You're able to come up with your own ideas without, um, excuse me, ideas about solving problems, um, different kinds of problems in different ways. So I'm going to read through a little example, um, and then we can talk about which level of cognitive processing questions could be asked on an exam. So once upon a time, there were three little bears who lived in a house in the forest. There was a great big father bear, a middle-sized mother bear, and a tiny baby bear. One morning, their breakfast porridge was too hot to eat, so they decided to go for a walk. While they were out, a little girl called Goldilocks came through the trees and found their house. She knocked on the door and there was no answer. She pushed it open and went inside. In front of her were a table and three chairs, one large chair, one middle-sized chair, and one small chair. On the table were three bowls of porridge, one large bowl, one middle-sized bowl, and one small bowl. Goldilocks was hungry and the porridge looked good, so she sat in the great big chair and picked up a large spoon and bowl, and she ate some porridge from the big bowl. But the chair was very big and hard, and the spoon was heavy and the porridge was too hot. Goldilocks jumped off quickly and went over to the middle-sized chair, but this chair was too soft, and when she tried the porridge, it was too cold. So she went to the little chair and picked up the smallest spoon and tried some of the porridge from the small bowl. This time it was neither too hot nor too cold. It was just right and delicious. She ate the whole thing. 
but she was too heavy for the little chair and it broke in pieces under her weight. Next, she went upstairs where she found three beds. There was a big bed, a little, a middle bed, and a little bed. She was feeling pretty tired, so she climbed into the big bed and laid down, but it was very hard and too big. So she tried the middle sized bed, but that was too soft, so she climbed into the tiny little bed. She fell right asleep. In a while, the three bears came back to, from their walk and they noticed that the front door was pushed in and that, um, that somebody had been in their house, sitting in their chairs, eating their porridge. Um, and so they went upstairs to see what was going on. So as they go upstairs, um, they noticed that there's somebody lying in, in a bed. There was someone who had laid in each of their beds and then there's somebody still in the little bed. So she jumped out of bed, Goldilocks jumped out of bed after they screeched that someone was in the tiny bed. So the bears had never seen her again. So the different levels of the Bloom's taxonomy um, first would be remember. So maybe a test question would be list the items used by Goldilocks while she was in the bear's house. That's something that you could easily do. You've probably all heard this story before. Um, so you could easily remember those things. Understanding is explaining why Goldilocks liked baby bear's chair the best. That might be a question on an exam for this type of story. Being able to apply means that you can demonstrate what Goldilocks would use if she came to your house. So that's coming outside of the story at hand. Um, analyze, you'd be able to compare the story to reality. So what events could not really happen, you'd be able to talk about that evaluating you'd be able to judge whether Goldilocks was good or bad and be able to defend your position um, and then finally create so writing a story about Goldilocks and the three fish how would it differ from Goldilocks and the three bears so those are the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy and how an instructor might try and push you to those different levels at the end of the learning process the goal with Bloom's taxonomy is that a student has honed a new skill a level of knowledge or developed a different attitude toward the subject so while you may have um, been more in the remember or understand levels in high school, a lot of your instructors are gonna try and push you to the higher levels of thinking. Okay, so here's where we jump into how to prepare for tests or papers um, or quizzes. Um, so prepare for success by understanding yourself. So study when and where you're most alert, plan your time with a schedule and calendar, understand when you work best, um, distribute practice to maximize your learning. So spend two to three hours studying outside of class for every hour in class. That's what the equation um, comes out to be. That's what's recommended across institutions. But try and spread it out over um, more frequent sessions and um, shorter bursts. Try to avoid study marathons. Um, the more often you look at the material, the easier it is for your brain to recognize and recall the information later. So you should be balancing your input versus your output. How are you taking in information? So if you're listening to a lecture and you're reading, try and balance those opportunities with different ways of learning. So by writing or speaking or drawing, the more different ways that you take in information, the easier it's going to be for you to process that information and to um, think about it later. Okay, so make sure you attend class regularly in order to avoid missing important concepts and hints from your instructors. Sometimes they will drop hints like this will be on the exam. If you're not there to hear that, you miss out on that um, opportunity. Listen and or read actively. So find answers to your questions using resources. Make sure you're critically thinking about the content to understand the larger context, which will help you understand those um, questions on the exam. So simply reading and rereading text or notes is not actively engaging the material. It's just rereading your notes. Um, and only doing the readings for class is not studying. It's simply doing the reading for class. So rereading leads to quickly forgetting what you just read like have you ever read a sentence and then had to reread the exact same sentence because you didn't process the information. It's because you weren't actively reading. So think of reading as an important part of pre-studying, but learning the actual information requires you to engage with it. So active engagement is the process of constructing meaning from text that involves making connections to lectures or coming up with examples on your own. Um, active studying doesn't mean highlighting or underlining, um, rereading or um, trying to memorize the information. 
they may help you in that process and may help you stay engaged with the task, but they're not considered active studying techniques because they have been shown to be weakly related to um, improved learning. So something to consider is a note taking system. Taking notes and using your notes later are key points of learning and remembering information from lectures or class discussions. It helps organize materials and thoughts, elevate your level of learning like we were talking about with Bloom's taxonomy. It helps you support your learning with text and, and clarify questions and starting points. So it, it kind of points out areas that you didn't quite understand. Um, it's going to be most useful if you use your notes as like a jumping off point for further learning, not as, oh, I took notes during class, so I know that information. Most of us know that that's not accurate. Um, if you put, if you took notes, it does not mean that you will remember those notes forever. So your brain is going to remember information better if it's seen multiple times and has different pathways for accessing the information. So um, some examples of different note taking options are Cornell notes, mind mapping, and outlines. Um, because note taking is such an important part of the learning process, it's a good idea to take time to evaluate your processes and your and experiment to find which note taking strategy works for you and, and for your course because it's going to depend on the person and it's also going to depend on the class that you're taking. So Cornell notes, um, you divide a paper into three parts. So that is right here. You put cues on the left, these are things that are going to um, try and cue your brain into remembering. So a lot of times it's good to pull those things that you wrote in that column as like key ideas and things to make for um, questions on a, a test. Um, the note section is going to be where you take like the bulk of your actual notes. Those are more traditional um, notes and then the summary section is placed at the bottom and it contains your final thoughts which should be written in your own words as an overview of what you had just learned um, so writing that trying to synthesize it into your own words is going to be really important for you to be able to remember it it also is important for calling out areas that you were very confused about outlining so this is um, used a lot by as a traditional form of um, note taking basically you use bullet points and include short sentences try to organize the um, content into main ideas it's easy to see relationships between topics and subtopics and it's easy to turn it into a study guide another way is a mapping method which is more suitable for those who prefer visual information um, it helps structure everything at once and reveals relationships between various concepts. So the next important thing is to synthesize your lecture and reading materials in your own words. It's going to help you understand the concepts and recall the information better later. Um, some ideas for active studying include creating a study guide by topic, uh, making up those problems and writing complete answers. Becoming a teacher, so saying the information aloud in your own words as if you're teaching a class. So you could be doing this in your in your bedroom, you could do, do this with your um, parents or friends. Derive examples that relate to your own experience. So this is a great way to remember things on an exam because you can sort of think of the, the experience you related it to and that can jog your memory. Uh, developing symbols that represent concepts um, for non-technical classes. So like English, history, psychology, um, figuring out the big ideas so you can explain, contrast them, and reevaluate them is really important. For more technical classes like math or chemistry, it's really important to just work the problems, explain the steps and why they work. The more you practice, the more you're going to be able to remember how to do it on an exam. Um, study in terms of question, evidence, and conclusion. What is the question going to be like what do you think your instructor is going to ask you um, what is the evidence that is presented and then what is the conclusion that you've come to so making the most out of um, in-class note-taking before class you should read or at least skim the assigned chapter almost every class is going to have a pre-exam assigned reading assignment so trying to skim the information for like bolded um, points or titles, subtitles, any graphs, um, trying to think of questions that you hope the lecture is going to answer, and then reviewing any notes that you took from the previous class. You should go into class with knowing the method of um, note taking that you're going to use and of course have a pencil and paper in the textbook. 
So during class, you should take notes in your own words, use consistent abbreviations and symbols, including, um, in, you should include notes for all aspects of the class. So whether it's lecture or discussion in groups, visuals, um, you should add depth and detail to your notes um, that you took preparing for class. So ideally when you read or skim the chapter, you're taking kind of ability, like you're setting up your learning for, for the day, right? You already have your brain prepped for what you're going to be learning. So in, you should already maybe have a brief outline of what you want to cover in the class. And then you add depth to that throughout the lecture. Um, answer any questions that you wrote before class, because if the lecturer didn't answer those questions, that's a perfect flag for you to ask that question. Make and visualize connections between concepts. So think Bloom's taxonomy. Try and, and stretch your brain, right? Because your brain is a muscle. So try and stretch your brain into thinking in those higher levels. Um, it's really important to write down on um, main ideas. Try not to write down every single the word that the instructor says because you're not you're going to get behind and then miss stuff. Um, write down just enough information so you know what the main ideas are from your notes. Uh, note new questions or areas of confusion from the lecture so you can review those concepts later. Um, so if you're using the Cornell style notes, that was something that would go in the left column, the cues column, something you want to address later. If something is stressed as important by the instructor, like if they say this is going to be on the exam, star it, circle it, highlight it, whatever works for you. And then finally, no matter what kind of note style you're taking or you're using, you should write a two to three sentence summary of what you, um, what was covered in class. That's again, ele elevating your level of thinking to the synthesizing um, level. All right, so some tips for how to use your notes after class. You should try and return to your notes immediately after class, preferably within 20 minutes because studies show that there is a steep drop off after the first 20 minutes in remembering what you have learned. Um, add, to note, add to your notes at moments you marked as confusing. Compare notes with a classmate. That's just a really good way to expand your brain by um, talking out loud, by um, brainstorming serving with someone. Transform your notes into a new format because learning the information in different formats will help your brain retain that information. Summarizing your notes verbally and in writing would be great. Talking again through with a classmate, drawing a picture based on the main concepts, connecting your current class notes to concepts that you learned in previous classes or weeks. Because if you have a cumulative exam, that's probably a good way to prep for that exam. Um, use your notes to self-test on key concepts. So make connections. Don't let lecture be the first or last time that you hear about a concept. That's just gonna lead to you being unprepared and doing poorly on exams. Read and take notes before class, add to those notes during class, and make connections between those concepts during and after class. That's a part of active learning, right? You're trying to explore and expand your understanding of something. One of the most impactful learning strategies is distributed practice. It's where you space out your studying over several short periods of time over several days and weeks. So the most effective practice is to work a short time on class each day. The total amount of time spent studying will probably be around the same or maybe even less than one or two marathon library sessions like right before an exam. Those are not going to do you any good. I mean, they might do you a little good, but they're going to lead to you being burnt out, not remembering information. Your brain can't completely um, create those neural connections when you're under stress and when you're trying to take on it too much information. At a certain point, your brain just kind of feels like it's numb and doesn't take in additional information. Um, the important thing is um, how you use your study time, not necessarily how long you study while you need to make sure that you have enough time to study the information fully, but really you need to, to focus on how you're studying too. So long study sessions lead to a lack of concentration and thus you're, you're not really learning. So you're not using your time efficiently. So in order to spread out studying over short periods of time across several days and weeks, you need to control your schedule. So keeping a list of tasks complete on a daily basis is going to help you include regular activities um, as well as your study sessions for each class. So try to do something for class each day if you can, uh, like 15 to 20 minutes would be really great. Be specific and realistic regarding how long you plan to spend on each task. You should not have more tasks in your list than you can reasonably complete. 
um, because it can just, it can lead to being overwhelmed and not wanting to do anything. So if you do a few problems per day in math, rather than all of them the hour before class, um, or if you, in sociology, you spend 15 to 20 minutes each day actively reading your class note, your um, notes, or reading, actively reading the um, text, you're going to spend less time in one chunk, but you're going to um, end up preparing for the class more um, efficiently and effectively. You're going to be able to answer more questions, and your brain has then, like, revisited something and you're making more connections to those things. It's going to help you stay focused and stay on top of your work rather than lead to procrastinating, like thinking, oh my god, I need to study for like three hours tonight. It's just going to end up leading you to Netflix and then you're going to be stressed out. Um, in, in addition to learning the material more deeply, spacing out your studying um, can really help with that procrastination. So rather than having to face the dreaded project for four hours on Monday, you can face it for 30 minutes each day and it's less daunting. So the shorter, more consistent time to work on those projects is likely to be more acceptable than um, trying to delay it. Finally, if you have to memorize material for class, like names or dates, um, formulas, it's best to make flashcards for that type of material, for material that you actually need to know verbatim. Um, through, and then you can like make flashcards, carry them with you, and you can just review them periodically throughout the day rather than one long memorization session because it's going to be a lot more effective. Okay, so finally creating. So organizing your information into different formats. Transform your notes into a new format because learning that information in different ways is going to help your brain retain the information. Using your notes to create study materials like outlines, charts, diagrams, those flashcards I was talking about, timelines, flow charts. It's going to help you recall information later on the exam because you can sort of view your study materials when you're trying to remember what, what you um, learned during the exam. Use structures that show relationships between materials like diagrams, charts, um, mind maps. That's going to help you with finding similarities and differences, comparisons, hierarchies, um, chronolo chron excuse me, chronologies. <laughs> So a study space inventory. If you visit the website that's listed on here, you'll be able to get to the study space inventory, which is a really nice um, tool that you can use to figure out where you study best because knowing where you study best um, is really important. So like if the silence of a library is not the right place for you, maybe um, you should consider what the noise level um, tolerance you have. Um, you might find that you concentrate better with some background noise. Some people find that listening to classical music is really helpful, but other people find it very difficult and distracting. The point is um, that silence of the library may be just as distracting as the noise at like a gym. So finding out what works for you and internalizing that and understanding that and using that to your advantage is going to be helpful. Um, so keep in mind that active studying is rarely silent. It, it oftentimes requires you to say the material aloud and to, again, make those um, additional neural connections. So if you want to, please take 10 minutes to do that study space inventory, pause the video and come back to it. Um, and um, I will see you in a little bit. Okay. So after taking the study space inventory, ask yourself if you recognize areas that could change for a more conducive study space. Did anything surprise you? Are you going to use this in the future? Push yourself and try it. Okay, so it's really important to take breaks. Um, you may need a break when you've maybe been concentrating and deeply focusing on your work for 45 minutes or more. Um, you've been studying for a while and you're no longer able to focus on something. You notice your mind water, wandering more frequently or you're unable to recall information as easily. You're switching maybe from one core subject to another. Those all indicate that you might need a break. So something that a lot of people really find useful, not just in school but outside of school as well, is the Pomodoro technique. So this can help you keep on task and stay interested in whatever you're working on. One of the most impactful study strategies is distributing your studying over multiple sessions. So it's easy to do that when you're doing the Pomodoro technique. First is you choose a task you'd like to get done 
something big, something small, something you've been putting off for a long time, you have to commit to giving the task your full and undivided attention. You can do this because it's only 25 minutes. Like you only have to commit to 25 minutes of paying fully full attention to this item. Um, set a timer on your phone or with a physical actual timer for 25 minutes and make a small like oath to yourself. Think, okay, I'll spend 25 minutes on this task and I will not interrupt myself. Put your phone away, um, like literally away from you, <laughs> um, not like away on your desk or like next to you. Um, make sure you don't have a TV on. There are no things around you that are going to take away your, your attention if that's something that's difficult for you. You can do this. After all, it's just 25 minutes that you're committing to. Um, also, there are apps on your phone that you can that you can um, set, uh, like you can block yourself from opening it. Do that for 25 minutes. Uh, if something, so work on, on the task until the timer goes off. Immerse yourself in it for 25 minutes. If you suddenly realize you have something else to do, something pops into your head, write that down on a scrap sheet of paper so that you don't have anxiety about forgetting about it, but then you also can just let it go because you've already written it down, you can leave it behind. When the timer goes off, put a check mark on that paper and take a short break. So like three to five minutes for the first um, three check marks you make. So you can you know, take some breaths, do some meditation, grab a cup of coffee, go for a short walk, do something else relaxing and not work related. If that means playing a game on your phone for five minutes, that's fine. Um, so you do that for the first three check marks. Then on every fourth check mark, you take a longer break. So it's 25 to 30 minutes and you can repeat as needed. This allows your brain to sort of process the information that you've just been taking in and allows those connections to be fully made rather than trying to make too many at once and your brain can't make those connections then. Self-testing. Self-testing is one of the best proven strategies for learning information and for being able to recall that information on an exam. So use your notes to create possible test questions, pay attention to bolded, underlined, main ideas, summary bullet points, charts, pictures, and textbooks. Working and reworking problems is important for technical courses like math, economics, chemistry. Be able to explain the steps of the problems and why they work in order to fully understand how to recreate that on an exam. Um, it's usually most important to work problems than read the text in those technical classes um, because practice is really going to be the way that your brain fully understands. Uh, in class, make sure to write down in detail the practice problems demonstrated by the professor. Annotate, take notes on each step about why, um, why they're doing what they're doing. Ask questions if you're confused in class. At the very, very least, record the question and the answer, even if you miss the steps, because then you can recreate it later. And then when you're preparing for tests, put together a large list of problems from the course material and lectures and work those problems. Explain the steps to yourself and why they work the way they do. Keep in mind the different levels of learning. So remembering you're able to recognize the concept and have memorized keywords, but you don't know how to apply the content in the question. Um, understand you can explain the material in its most basic form and answer the simple questions. Apply, you know how to how it's connected to the bigger picture and you can use the concept to answer questions you might not have seen before. Um, mastery, um, creating, you can teach it and answer other questions. You can explain your answer to a difficult question and why the other answers might be wrong. That's key in like multiple choice questions. Um, do practice problems, put ideas into your own words, apply your knowledge to real world situations, reuse past exam questions or quizzes. That is such a key thing to do because a lot of times instructors will take some of those questions and put them on the exam. Um, trade and discuss questions with a classmate and or a group of classmates. This can help because it can create, you can create multiple problems and share them and you can um, sort of have more practice that way. Okay, so emergency setting. Ideally, you'll have enough time to study for your exam, but there might be situations when you need to study at the last minute. Please, please, please try to avoid this, but it happens. Um, it might be tempting to try and read everything and fast because you're afraid of being asked about a topic you haven't looked at, but remember reading a large amount of material at a frenzied pace won't help your understanding or retention. Um, techniques that I'm about to talk about won't read um, yield comprehensive learning, but it can be useful in short-term study scenarios. 
Um, again, if you need this class uh, for your major or for um, like further learning, you need those foundation skills. So please, please prioritize your studying. But let's take a breath, relax, and let's talk about what kind of steps you can do in these situations. Choose what's important. You won't have time to study everything, so you'll have to make some decisions about prioritization. Review previous quizzes and exams. Did those questions come from lecture notes, readings, or videos? Was there any uh, focus on vocab, knowing concepts, or solving problems? That's the strategy that you need to go for each individual instructor. Um, take a practice test or some answer some questions from the homework online or the textbook. Note what you already know, what's familiar but needs more practice, and what you don't know at all. Prioritize the items in the last two categories. Study some important things from each week or section of the course if it's a cumulative exam. Instructors often balance questions of all the from all the material covered in class. If an instructor has told you to focus on certain chapters or topics, do that instead. Do whatever the instructor has told you to do, but if they haven't instructed you to focus on certain topics, try to pick certain things from each um, week. Take time to plan. So it may not feel like you have time to make a plan. You might be so scattered and frenzied, but it's so important to do so because even 15 minutes of planning can help you feel more organized and it can position you to prioritize the most important things and therefore make your time more efficiently spent. So take a quick assessment of how much time you have available for actual studying, divide that into sections, make a rough sketch of how much time you'll put towards different areas of focus. So example, two hours at 3 p.m. for the content for week eight, um, try using the hour by hour weekly schedule to plot out your study plan. This is located on the WASA um, coaching workshop um, website. So if you go to UWSP at WASA and you click on academics and tutoring learning center, there's a lot of tools on that website that you can use to help you. Um, use your time to practice. So many people wait until they feel comfortable with the material to test themselves, but it's actually research shows that answering practice questions and doing practice problems is one of the top strategies for mastering material. Even if you don't know the answer, um, you can ha have the, um, the test questions and be ready to look it up at the end. So if you're short on time, spend it practicing. Like that's really going to be your problem, best bet. When you know the answer, great. When you don't, look it up, try again. Tests. Okay, so we're at the test. What do we do? Arrive early with all necessary materials. Try and take a deep breath. When you receive the exam, read through the entire test and estimate how much time you're going to spend on each question. Pace yourself um, based on the amount of points the questions are worth. You don't want to waste your time on like a one point question when there's five point questions later. Two minute drill. This is the first thing, one of the first things you should do. Brain dump. Unload any information, equations, or other things that are in your head that you don't want to forget that you can use throughout the exam. Take like two minutes to do this. As you're answering questions, make sure to read each question thoroughly, including the instructions. It's really important to do that. You think you maybe understood the instructions, but you only read halfway through and you didn't realize that they're asking you to do the opposite thing at the end of the question. It's really important to read the question fully. Circle any keywords or absolute words um, or rephrase questions to make them into statements. Answer all of the questions, all parts of the questions. When you get stuck, mark the question, return to it later, move on to the next question. Um, think about your study session. Can you recall anything related to the topic? Can you think of any pictures that you drew that was about the topic? Look for clues in other questions. So sometimes there are questions later in the exam that kind of hint or talk about something in a way that uh, pre answers a previous question. Engage your learning preferences. So think about visuals or auditory cues or, you know, however you feel you learn best, like whatever your learning preference is, try and utilize that in the test space. Consider the question from the instructor's point of view. What are they wanting you to demonstrate your knowledge in? Throughout the exam, develop a system for going through the test to make sure you don't miss any questions or um, that you leave time to double check your answers at the end, especially if, if you've um, done some math on some questions, make sure you double check on that. Finally, 
analyze a return test to determine why you missed certain questions, there is a document on that coaching website that is uh, like a, a test autopsy where you can go through and you can analyze why you missed the questions and um, what areas you need to really focus on. Understanding that information is going to help you prepare, prepare for your next um, exam, including the areas that you need to work on. Finally, make an appointment with me. Um, I would be happy to talk with you to help you come up with a schedule, to help you come up with um, study strategies or note-taking strategies more specific to you and your needs. I did just a brief overview of all these different areas um, just to get you started. But if you would like, I would love to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and talk about what could work for you. Um, you can schedule it via Navigate. If you Google UWSP Navigate, it will walk you through step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that, or you can even email me and I can send you those directions as well. Um, thank you so much for watching my video and I hope this was useful for you. I um, look forward to hearing from you.